In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Last Sunday, I spoke at length about St. John the Baptist, about his character, in particular about his absolute faith and his incredible fearlessness. This Sunday, I would like to speak about another very important figure of the Advent season, the Blessed Mother, who is particularly relevant to us at this time as Americans. This past week, we celebrated two feasts of the Blessed Mother. On December 8th, we celebrated the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Our nation is dedicated to the Blessed Mother under this title of the Immaculate Conception. So particularly relevant to citizens of the United States of America. And then we just celebrated on December 12th the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, who is patroness of the Americas. So we'd like to focus on our Blessed Mother under these two titles in particular relative to this Advent season. With regards to the Immaculate Conception, there are three human beings, three human persons out of all humanity from the very beginning, and this will be true to the very end, only three who can be said to have come into existence immaculate. The first two are our parents, Adam and Eve, who were not conceived but were created immaculate without the stain of sin. And if in that Garden of Eden they had resisted the temptation of the serpent, they would have continued in the garden immaculate, free from sin. There would have been no more testing of them, and they would have been able to produce offspring in an immaculate condition. But that is not how it played out. They listened to the tempting of the serpent which, of course, is Satan. And they rebelled against God, seeking to be gods themselves. And so they forfeited their immaculate condition. And no human being will be conceived as immaculate since then or until the end of time, with the one exception of the Blessed Mother. Yes, there are those, in particular St. John the Baptist and perhaps Jeremiah, who were cleansed of original sin while in the womb, but only Mary has the singular privilege of having been conceived immaculate. And God did this for a number of reasons, the first of which certainly would be to provide sinless humanity to her son, the Son of God, but also so that we would have a new Eve who remains immaculate to be alongside the new Adam, her Son, Jesus Christ. And because Mary is always the immaculate from the beginning of her existence into eternity, Satan, the serpent, has no power over her. In fact, by the grace of God, the Immaculate has incredible power over the evil one. So much so that they tremble 
at the very name of Mary, as they do with the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And because she is immaculate and has this great power by God over the evil one, she is a great advocate and intercessor for us. And a perfect example of this is with regards to the other feast I mentioned, Our Lady of Guadalupe. This apparition or apparitions go back almost 500 years into the 16th century, the 1530s. To put this in historical perspective, in Europe at that time, we had the Protestant rebellion in full force under the likes of Martin Luther and John Calvin and so many others. To put it in perspective, this is the time of King Henry VIII, who had divorced his first wife and would go on to take a succession of others in the 1530s and after, some of whom he executed. Meanwhile, while that's happening in Europe, we go to the Americas, we go to Central America, we go to a remote location near what is now Mexico City. And in that region and in this country of America, Central America, there's no Protestant Reformation because there's no Christianity. The religion of that part of the world is a horrific, barbarous, bloody pagan religion or religions of the Aztec people who were known for human sacrifices. I can't even describe for you from the pulpit uh, the method in which they sacrificed human beings. I will only say this. In a single day, in the dedication of a temple, more than 10,000 innocent human sacrifices were offered. So much for the dignity of indigenous peoples, by the way. But at any rate, it is into this environment, into this uh, part of America, that the Blessed Mother appeared to a peasant man by the name of Juan Diego, since then canonized. And she revealed herself to him in his native language as the one who crushes the serpent. That's not widely known in modern times. But Our Lady of Guadalupe revealed to Juan Diego, Saint Juan Diego, her title or name as the one who crushes the serpent. Imagine that. And the miraculous image, which we're all familiar with, of the woman clothed with the sun, which has biblical connections to the apocalypse, would have also had great symbolism to those pagans, the Aztecs. Because it pictures the Blessed Mother standing on the moon and blocking or standing in front of the sun. And those were the two most powerful gods, false gods of the Aztecs showing her superiority to their pagan gods and another one of which was a serpent. Imagine that. And because the Blessed Mother appeared and interceded for the Central America, within years there were millions of conversions to the faith. Millions. And eventually, Catholicism became the dominant religion of the Americas, or at least of Central America, and then spread. Imagine that. That's the power of the Immaculate One, the Immaculate Conception. 
Our Lady of Guadalupe, the one who crushes the serpent. Lord knows and Our Lady knows how badly we need now the one who crushes the serpent here in this part of the Americas, the United States of America. Because we, as a nation, have been practicing for decades human sacrifice. Human sacrifices of unborn children, upwards of a million a year. That averages out to well over 2,000, somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 human sacrifices offered every day of the year for decades. Tens and tens of millions of human sacrifices. In that regard, we're no better than the Aztecs. We also have a government or elements of the government that seek to be our God, who even now are seeking to subdue and crush true religion to replace it with the government of God. How badly we need the Immaculate Conception. How badly we need Our Lady of Guadalupe. How badly we need the one who crushes the serpent. And we have been praying for intercession in earnest, especially as we have come to realize the rise of evil, the strengthening of the children of darkness in their war against the children of light. We are praying for the mercy of God Frankly, because one way or another, we will be corrected. We've been praying that the correction will come by way of grace, by way of conversion. But conversion depends upon acceptance. Grace will not force. So that depends upon an exercise of the free will of the people of this nation to accept the grace of conversion. So we've been praying and continue to pray for that. But at some point, if not by grace, the correction comes by chastisement. And if we have reached that point, so be it. That is God's will and it is certainly then the will of Our Lady. But for now, continue to pray for the conversion of souls in place of the chastisement of our nation and world. Now this is Gaudete Sunday, which means to be joyful, to rejoice. It's the opening word of the introit of this Mass, rejoice. And we've brightened the colors of Advent to rose, symbolize the joy of anticipation, anticipating the celebration of Christmas, the birth of the Savior, the coming of Christ. And I turn again to Mary, the Blessed Mother, this time as the mother of our Lord. She lived and moved in a very dark world, the darkness of the pagan Roman Empire, the darkness of Herod, the darkness of the closed, shuttered doors of the inn, which had no place for her or Joseph or the Christ child yet to be born. So she knew the darkness of sin in the world. But she still had the joy of a mother, not only the joy that any mother has or should have, anticipating the birth of a child, but the joy of the mother of God, who knew with absolute certitude, not only by faith, but by the revelation of an archangel, that she was bearing the Son of God, 
the Savior of the world, the light of the world. And she had that inner joy and peace that's available to every one of us knowing this, that in a short time, the light of the world would break into the darkness of sin in a dramatic new way in the history of the world. Beginning at Bethlehem and continuing in a special way at Golgotha to crush the head of the serpent. Whereby the base of the cross and the heel of the woman, the new Adam and Eve, definitively crush that serpent at the place of the skull. So on this, the Gaudete Sunday of Advent, even in the darkness of the sin of the world, let us experience the inner peace, the inner joy of the mother of our Lord, knowing that on Christmas Day and continuing until the end of time, that the light of the world has been born into our world and that the mother of God, the new Eve, will assist us through our prayers to continue to crush the head of the serpent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.